here with uh, Professor John Falk, and you um, agreed to talk um, with us about um, the encyclical Laudatio of uh, Pope Francis. Um, thank you for this uh, already now yeah. for your time. When and how did you f first hear about um, this encyclical letter? Yeah, uh, I heard about it uh, almost immediately after it came out mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, it uh, it received a, a lot of public attention in uh, in Canada. Yeah, you're from Canada. I, I'm mm -hmm. from Canada. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in fact, the uh, our national uh, newspaper, mm -hmm. uh, the Globe and Mail, uh, had an editorial uh, mm -hmm. on. The, the encyclical. It, mm -hmm. it, uh, it had news reports about the encyclical, so written by, by others, uh, in which it <clears throat> highlighted uh, some of the main features of the encyclical. But what was most important was an editorial. Mm -hmm. So the editorial board, so sort of the, the main view of the, the, this, this uh, national newspaper, um, <clears throat> spoke about it and spoke very highly about it. Okay. And this is very interesting because it's not a religious paper whatsoever. Okay. Uh, and uh, spoke very favorably uh, about it. So that was one of the things that really caught my attention. Okay. Uh, that this large newspaper yeah. uh, thought that the encyclical was sufficiently noteworthy mm -hmm. uh, to actually uh, write about it. And, uh, and, and so it was in the public attention almost immediately after it came out. Okay. So this again your attention because um, newspapers should transport information. They should be to a certain rate um, uh, neutral as well as uh, science generally. Um, but uh, in this case, um, they were uh, in favor of this uh, letter. Or? Very much so. Very much so. And and, and uh, I think one of the reasons uh, for this is because. Um, The, the newspaper itself, and, and, and many, many other uh, people, many, many in Canada, are very supportive of the need to, to make changes in terms of the environment. So here was a significant religious figure, okay. hope of the whole Catholic world, mm -hmm. uh, saying many of the same things. Okay. Uh, and I think that's why it attracted the attention of the newspapers. And it was on, uh, on an issue uh, that uh, Uh, for many people is, is no longer controversial in mm -hmm. the sense that, uh, that climate change is real, environmental destruction is real, mm -hmm. and here we have a significant religious figure mm -hmm. uh, that was uh, speaking about this uh, mm -hmm. you know, for the, the members of the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. but also beyond. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what uh, <clears throat> was uh, very significant about this encyclical. Okay, this uh, brings us already to uh, another point, um, which we will uh, soon uh, talk about. Um, did you read um, the encyclical, or um, at least the parts of the encyclical? Did you read it? And um, um, do you remember, remained there uh, certain messages or passages or statements, uh, statements, um, statements which um, would you um, Which you would uh, highlight, um, which you regard as uh, significant. Uh, and uh, there are a couple of things that struck me about about the encyclical. Uh, one is uh, that uh, it, um, uh, it it <clears throat> a, it 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 spoke very clearly about the fact that uh, that uh, we in the Western world were causing a lot of environmental destruction just by uh, our lifestyles. Uh, and so, to highlight this, I think was was very important, very very instructive. It was a reminder to all people in the in the Western world, yeah. in the so-called developed world, yeah. that uh, that that our way of living uh, is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that was very clear, and 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 that uh, the uh, the Pope also pointed fingers. At, at what, you know what I would consider certain culprits, and that is the whole consumeristic way of life, whole capitalistic way of life, uh, that it, it, it indicated that these ways of life, or as I would call it also worldviews, uh, <clears throat> were uh, uh, leading us into this <clears throat> journey of destruction. And, and it needed to change. It really needed to change. And so, and so that's the first thing. Second, second thing would be that 
the environmental destruction was having a huge impact uh, on uh, on the world, right? Uh, <clears throat> but it was leading to uh, the destruction of plants, the the extinction of certain animals, uh, and if we didn't halt it at some point or turn it around, the consequences would have been would be quite severe. We were mm -hmm. going to continue to yeah. see yeah. Uh, some very destructive forces uh, being unleashed. Mm -hmm. Third thing, uh, and, and this was very, very, uh, also very instructive, is that the Pope indicated that um, <clears throat> there are certain sectors of society that suffer more greatly than others in regard to uh, uh, climate change and environmental destruction. While the wealthier countries, the wealthier people, could find the means to protect themselves to a certain extent, it was the poor largely in the world that were going to feel this because they did not have the means uh, to protect themselves. Mm -hmm. And this is a message that Pope Francis has said in other contexts as well, but it came through very clearly yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in one of his first encyclicals uh, that the poor uh, were also the ones that were suffering greatly because of that. And, and yeah. these, these things, uh, for me, uh, stood out very clearly that I thought were very yeah. significant. Same to me. Um, I think I, uh, I knew about those things, about those connections, more or less, but uh, only or just when I was engaging more with uh, the topics of um, sustainability, I, I really um, recognized it. Uh, how big the effects of our uh, actings or not actings yeah. are uh, on other parts of the world. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very important part, a, a very important uh, comment because uh, it also indicated clearly that uh, no action mm -hmm. was in fact action. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So that we we, uh, we 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 by maintaining the lifestyle that we do, yeah. we are in fact causing a mm -hmm. lot of. Uh, Destruction. So we must act and act in a different way than we currently are. There's no neutrality here. Yeah. Mm, maybe we can uh, continue. As a, uh, I would love to uh, to continue with the interview, but maybe we can continue in some weeks or uh, next year, uh, maybe via Skype, uh, and think about the solutions a little bit. Yes, yes. Because I think you you're very. Um, uh, you go deep into the topics and I think or somehow I feel that um, you could have uh, ideas for solutions that is um, to implement them uh, or to reach um, to arrive at the point you want to arrive it's uh, even more difficult but first you have to have an idea uh, yeah, yeah yeah the uh, <coughs> I, I look at all these these issues from mm -hmm. my area of expertise, which is worldviews, yeah. and, and and so when I worldviews is your um, worldviews. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, um, it was on the card. Um, <coughs> um, <coughs> virtue studies. <coughs> yeah. Virtue studies. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and I think that uh, uh, that um, sheds a different kind of light on on the entire issue <coughs> because. It, it asks some uh, some of the larger questions. Why is why are we so uh, bent on increasing our consumption? Why does this continue, right? And and uh, I I uh, ask some of these questions uh, because I think that they also touch on theological issues. You know, what is <clears throat> to use theological language? You know. Uh, where do we look for our healing? Where do we look for our salvation? That's a theological term, but yeah. it means where where do we look for satisfaction and, and, and for happiness and, and, and for things that will fill uh, our lives uh, for the things that we are, we are aiming for. And the consumerist worldview really says, well, it's material things and we continue to, to reach for more and more and more of these things. As if, as if things will fill our uh, fill our lives, and it's an it's a, a continually perpetuating uh, journey and, and endeavor. We will never fill, as the, you know, many many theological traditions have said, mm -hmm. by stuff, mm -hmm. by material things. Yeah. Uh, but we are bent on this, and and so the consumeristic worldview and even the capitalistic worldview continues to encourage us 
to buy more and more and That's more. That's system. Yeah. Uh, and we fall for it. Yeah. Right? Rather than asking ourselves the question, what well, can we do without all these things? Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that, uh, that, that uh, the development of modern or certain modern things are not very helpful. Yeah. Cell phones, mm -hmm. cameras, yeah. right? Medical ads. Yes, and, and <coughs> so we don't want to halt those, but I think that the, the incessant desire for more and more of these things, I think now is, is something we have to really begin to grapple with. Do we really need another, another cell phone? Yeah. Do we really need automobiles that are yeah. becoming so, so sophisticated yeah. that we don't even <coughs> understand them anymore? So these are the questions that we, we need to ask ourselves. Will such advancements really give us the peace and happiness that we're really after? And for me, these are big worldview questions that we need to grapple with. If I may, may add uh, just a little thing, uh, satisfying or, in my case, m more or more dissatisfying. That is, I don't feel calm anymore if I don't um, use all, my, all the gifts that uh, God gave me to improve, uh, to do something for a more sustainable world and to fight against uh, the injustices and so on. That is, if I stay passive, this is dissatisfying me also as a factor or a motivator. Absolutely. <coughs> uh, we, we have, uh, speaking from a religious uh, perspective, you know, we have been <coughs> uh, 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 created uh, mm -hmm. with uh, creativity mm -hmm. uh, and imagination and we must exercise that, mm -hmm. that's a mandate yeah. that we are given uh, and so we must. Uh, it's really a question uh, to what ends do we uh, use our creative imagination? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What is it that we are developing? What that's is crazy. it that we are inventing? Yeah. Uh, and we must always ask ourselves these questions um, for what purpose? Mm -hmm. Is it for the purpose of um, greater riches, material things? Yeah. Is, it, is it for uh, establishing greater peace and harmony uh, with each other, with, with the natural world? Mm -hmm. Those are considerably different things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, let's uh, continue a little bit. Um, you also um, uh, touched the, the impact of Lado to Sea. Um, especially in, um, in uh, Canada. Um, maybe we can uh, summarize um, this, this part a little bit. So yeah. regarding the impact, um, but what, what would you say, um, what um, impact could it cause or in, maybe in the whole um, sustainability development area or in, in certain, certain areas also? And how, how could it um, work maybe as a, as a catalyst? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, the, <clears throat> I, I have had my students read this encyclical. Mm -hmm. right? uh, in your in your seminar now, the students have to read this? Yes, yes. Ah, okay. in, my, in, my, in the courses that I teach, the students, uh, the students are uh, uh, have an option among a number of readings mm -hmm. and, uh, and they, uh, a very large number of the students um, choose this one. Okay. They're not compelled to, mm -hmm. uh, but it's one of the options and they actually choose it. Right? Wasn't that uh, surprising? surprising for you? Uh, in, uh, <clears throat> in one way, yes, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in, in another way, uh, no, because I think they were, they were enticed by... Curious a little bit? by curious, uh, by what um, they are already interested in, and that's, and, and most young people are very interested in, in uh, issues of the environment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so they had an, then uh, an option to pick this one, and they did. And it was very surprising, the reaction of the students, right? The first one was uh, that they were quite surprised uh, that a religious leader focused on this. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That they did not expect it. Mm -hmm. right? uh, and they were, they were surprised mm -hmm. uh, that what they read was something that they uh, almost fully agreed with. Mm -hmm. See? Uh, because uh, the, the, the young people, 
mostly in Canada, but I think also elsewhere, very, very skeptical of religious leaders, mm -hmm. and particularly the Pope. And many of them uh, know very little about it, uh, but what they know is generally uh, not very positive. So they're very surprised to hear a Pope uh, speak on something that they're also very uh, 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 interested in, and then articulating it to the extent that, uh, that he did. Uh, and, and then they surprise themselves by saying, uh, oh, I actually agree with this, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, uh, and then, and then the, the, uh, the additional part was that they're very astounded that the, that the Pope would speak about these things to the extent that the Pope did. The last thing that uh, many of the students focused on was how inclusive the Pope was mm -hmm. in this uh, subject area. Mm -hmm. He, many students think there's still a uh, conflict between religion and science. Mm -hmm. They're very surprised that the Pope uh, 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 mentioned and brought into the discussion mm -hmm. the researchers of, of many scientific uh, endeavors uh, that uh, it wasn't just totally theological language, he was focusing on what many scientists said also, and he brought them into the picture, uh, as well as uh, uh, people from other religious traditions, not only the, the other Christian traditions, but many other uh, world, world uh, religious traditions, brought them into the discussion, and, mentioned them. And also, um in, in indigenous, uh, and indigenous knowledge, um, yeah. that this was this was surprising uh, or impressing for, for me. Um, he said there in the Vatican, uh, people from all over the world were there, were there um, uh, from from uh, the Amazonas. Uh, it was a conference on the uh, Sea from the Amazonas. Um, uh, uh, Shamane, uh, sh sh yeah, um, from uh, Alaska, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Jews. Um, Politicians, uh, scientists, all in the Vatican, yeah, yeah. and they talked uh, on uh, how do you say? Um, everyone had the same uh, um, the same uh, voice. Yeah, uh, let's yeah. say uh, was um, respected and so on. And they talked about how to improve um, uh, the world. So um, also rely on different forms of knowledge and wisdom. Um, was uh, uh, the Pope asks, and that was uh, that uh, impressed me very much. Yeah, uh, um, uh, likewise, and, and 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 so this inclusive inclusive approach uh, uh, was was very very important. Mm -hmm. And and I would also add that while many people are surprised by this, right? It's it's not that it's it's, it's always missing from. Uh, some of these uh, uh, discussions and debates that come out of the Vatican. I know in terms of the whole issue of, of science, mm -hmm. uh, the Pope, uh, the um, uh, John Paul II, mm -hmm. uh, uh, has himself invited to the Vatican uh, scientists mm -hmm. in very many different capacities to come in and discuss. And, and, and uh, some of the uh, discussions that have taken place at that level are very, very fascinating discussions and are very, very inclusive of, of, of people who may not gravitate towards Catholic theology, but uh, those discussions are in fact being had that I think all too many people simply aren't aware of, and that's very unfortunate. So it's not, it's not surprising that when it came to the uh, whole issue of, of environmental destruction and climate change, yeah. that the Pope would have invited uh, people into the discussion. Uh, so he's not just listening to his own voice, he's listening to the voices of others. And, 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 and the fact that this is mentioned in the encyclical, I think impressed a lot of people, that, that it was in fact quite inclusive. Yeah. Okay, I could make many comments, but uh, looking a little bit on the time, I would um, yeah go uh, on to the last question. Um, uh, please let me uh, introduce it a little bit. And we also uh, touched um, the field of science. That is um, various um, experts regard science, that is research and education. 
um, as an important driver for a great transform transformation, a great transformation towards uh, more sustainability. Um, to act um, as a catalyst, science uh, and especially universities, um, higher education, um, must transform themselves for being able um, to support societal transformation actively. Demands, for example, uh, Uwe Schneider, a uh, German professor. Mm, for example, research and education should orientate themselves more on the great global ch ch challenges of our times, like climate change, or they should uh, involve civil society more intensively. Now, there are um, university and academic actors who take, besides um, technical, scientific, secular impulses, also impulses which have a religious, normative uh, character and focus, um, like um, the document La Rousse. And these actors try to catalyze, um, to catalyze uh, those impulses. Mm. In what do you see maybe a potential for the tra transformation of universities in uh, the case that uh, university actors um, try to catalyze besides those, uh, those um, technical scientific um, impulses, um, religious, also religious normative characters? Do you see um, a potential um, for the transformation of universities to a more uh, transformative uh, actor. D did you get the question? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, uh, but it's a very difficult question because okay. yes, because the uh, uh, it and again it depends on the the context, the national mm -hmm. context. But the universities, mm -hmm. um, the public, the big public universities. Um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> this is a very large discussion. Uh, what, what is the purpose of the larger university, the larger mm -hmm. public university? Uh, and, and here we have uh, the university agendas often being driven by uh, what society feels it needs. Mm -hmm. and, and the current universities, and these, these, uh, there's been books written about this, many, many discussions. Uh, that <clears throat> the purpose of the university is to educate students mm -hmm. to become players in, in, the, in the dominant mm -hmm. uh, 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 <clears throat> agendas of, of, of the nation. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> uh, that uh, universities must assist uh, the unfolding of business endeavors mm -hmm. uh, uh, so that uh, the, the uh, economic development of a particular mm -hmm. nation is enhanced. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that the only agenda of the university? Mm -hmm. So much research is going into the university now that has, uh, has uh, business implications. Mm -hmm. right? um, <clears throat> but I think the, the, the real question that, that uh, universities must deal with, and I think the, the encyclical is certainly one of them, uh, that uh, advocates this is uh, uh, research for what purposes? Mm -hmm. uh, is it simply to uh, unfold greater and, and, and new businesses? Yeah. Yeah. Or is it to, in fact, uh, develop research uh, that will, in fact, lead to more sustainable living? Mm -hmm. right? It's not the research should stop, mm -hmm. but research is not neutral. Mm -hmm. uh, it's always the question research for what purposes? Mm -hmm. And these are the things that. Uh, uh, universities, <clears throat> great and small, must continue to ask themselves. Mm -hmm. Because it's a question about, uh, uh, again, what is the purpose of the university? Uh, who's paying for the university, mm -hmm. uh, ultimately? And uh, <clears throat> if, if, in the Canadian context, government funds universities mm -hmm. to a very, very large extent. Mm -hmm. And it wants to ensure that what it's spending its money on uh, is able to enhance the, the goals of a particular nation. And more and more of these are being articulated as uh, research for business uh, development. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but, uh, and, it's, and sometimes it's couched in, you know, for the public good, but we really have to ask ourselves a question. Uh, 
Uh, is it in fact doing that or is it propelling more of the same kinds of things mm -hmm. that the Pope is alluding to in the, in the encyclical mm -hmm. that is harming the planet? Mm -hmm. right? and, and so it's, ho it's hoped uh, that uh, those who have read this encyclical are more and more encouraged to ask some of these larger questions okay. to what is the uh, the larger question, what's the purpose of the university? But also is what we are doing in the universities assisting uh, to change uh, the direction yeah. that we are living our yeah. lives, yeah. a destructive uh, tendency, yeah. uh, and is being used more to advance the health of the planet. And I think it can be done, and I think in many cases it is being done, uh, but we have to be more intentional about it. And, and we have to articulate this. And so the, the, uh, the Pope's encyclical, uh, as well as many others involved in the environmental movement, uh, are encouraging more and more, uh, <clears throat> even on the political level. Uh, okay. Green parties, for example, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, do not necessarily look to the Pope for guidance, no. but now have an advocate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that this is very powerful. So hopefully, um, <clears throat> by the Pope lending his voice uh, to the voices of many others <clears throat> will um, see uh, that, uh, that, that, that the Pope is joining hands uh, with many others in a common cause. So suddenly you have a whole big Catholic world uh, and the Pope reminding even the Catholics uh, that they can no longer ignore this. Interestingly enough, uh, I know in the U.S. the biggest criticism of the encyclical actually came from the Catholic world, mm -hmm. which is very surprising. Uh, uh, Catholic <coughs> American world. <coughs> yeah, yeah, American yeah. Catholics. Uh, uh, maybe more on the conservative side of Catholicism. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and so there was criticism, but it was criticism not from the so-called secular world, mm -hmm. <clears throat> that in many ways said, "Wow, we, you know, we, yeah, we yeah, can support yeah, this." Yeah, yeah. Right. So, uh, so uh, it, it's it's a wake up call to to many people. Uh, it it is a wake up call to those who who look at their religious faith as being very narrowly understood. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, it's part of an activity you do in private. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, when yeah. you go to church. Uh, but now the Pope is saying, no, 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 it's a, it's, it's, it, it goes far beyond this, mm -hmm. uh, that in order to live an obedient life, mm -hmm. uh, you must take care of uh, God's good creation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's part of what it means to lead, lead a very obedient life, because uh, the earth is God's creation. So it regards also, also our um, self-understanding of Christians, yes. or uh, I'm... I am Christian uh, because of this I'm talking as uh, uh, um, self-understanding of us Christians, uh, of the Christians, let's, let's say. So they, they have to uh, be active. Very much so. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that's very clear from this encyclical mm -hmm. to, to that, that, that we cannot separate our lives mm -hmm. into sort of a religious side mm -hmm. Which we enact in our private yeah. lives, yeah. Uh, in you know, in our in our church church communities, mm -hmm. uh, but now now that uh, it is extended, mm -hmm. and in all that we do, in our buying, in our selling, mm -hmm. in what we hold to be important, mm -hmm. uh, this encyclical is a reminder mm -hmm. uh, that we need to pay very close attention to these things, uh, and the way we live our lives mm -hmm. uh, is. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Uh, has an impact, and especially an impact on the environment, and uh, an impact on uh, those uh, who are on the uh, the lower end of the socio-economic scale. Mm -hmm. That it impacts their lives very negatively. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, all of this resonates very well with 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 my own upbringing. It's not Catholic upbringing, but mm -hmm. uh, very closely uh, encourages. Mm -hmm. Uh, us to continue to live uh, our lives uh, in a way that's, um, uh, in this case, takes very 
great care of the environment and, and, uh, and the natural world. So this we must. This is a call to action. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much uh, okay. for your good uh, thoughts.